Hello. Time. In our house, we have many clocks and we seem to have them in every room. And in some rooms, there seem to be a lot more than in others. When I was working, my life was dictated to by clocks, dictated to by time. Time to do this, time to do that. Everything functioned around times of the day. In the days before coronavirus, um, John and I, are clean travellers, were caravanners. We enjoyed cruising. We enjoy um, walking trips, city breaks. But one of the greatest joys for me of the caravan is that when we go away in the caravan, we don't have to worry about time. We can get up when we want to get up. And I, funnily enough, always seem to, to sleep much better in the caravan. Maybe it's because it's darker, I don't know. But we can get up when we want to get up. We can go to bed when we want to go up to bed. Up to bed. We can go to bed when we want to go to bed. Um, we, we, we can eat when we want to eat. And the, the joy for ca of caravanning is that the day is your own. Uh, and we love it. When we're on a cruise... One of the things that's always made us laugh is that uh, if you're getting up in the morning and you want to go on a day excursion, you often have to get up quite early and you congregate on the quayside. Absolutely fine. But often when you go to bed at night, there's a little card on your bed that says the clocks move forward tonight at two o'clock a.m. or backwards at night. Well, I've got my, my my iPhone and we use my iPhone as our alarm clock. And um, so I try and move my phone forward an hour, then set the alarm so that we're right at the right time in the morning for getting up. But what I have only just really learnt is that even when we're at sea, and I still don't know how it does it, my phone has the ability to move itself forward an hour automatically at two o'clock when they do it. So the number of times we've got in a mess trying to get down to the quayside at the right time and I've got the alarm clock completely wrong. John just laughs about it now and we just sort of have finally learnt that the alarm clock just if we set it for whatever time we want to get up the clock will sort itself out but I tell you we've, we've had some pretty close shaves and believe you me Going out for a day and John not having his breakfast is not a good combination. So time, time just seems to rush by us, doesn't it? Time means different things to different people. It conjures up different feelings and different images. It may help you, um, may make you think of, of lazy afternoons, relaxing in the sun or um, an evening curled up in front of the fire with a book or something to read and enjoy. Or it may remind you of those good old days when we used to have friends around for meals and we used to sit and just enjoy one another's company and chat and talk. I'm sure those evenings will return one day. We no longer hold our days in the palms of our hands, regarding them as precious jewels but more as if somebody is trying to steal our time, to take our time away from us, to force us to let time to slip through us, through our fingers like sand, grains of sand. Instead of thinking that we actually have all the time in the world, we worry that we have no time. We're seduced by time-saving gadgets. We're seduced by fast food, shortcuts through traffic. You know, when there's a queue on the A31 and you think, oh, if I go this way and round that way, I'll avoid the queue. And you, you avoid it about five minutes of the queue and you think you've really achieved something. But five minutes, is it worth the hassle? I don't know. I'm reminded of the, um, the um, rabbit in Alice in Wonderland that's uh, running along looking at his... T his um, his watch saying, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. It's only when we are at bo rock bottom 
Overwhelmed by our busyness and exhausted by continual activity, weighed down by the massive tasks to fulfil in our lives, that we actually take stock and run away and metaphorically hide in a cave, just like Elijah in the Bible, just like Ruth in coronavirus. The lockdown has caused many people to just stop and pause and reflect. When we allow ourselves that space and that time to be still and listen, then, then perhaps we too can hear the still small voice of calm. But we have to remember that that voice is there at all times. It's not just when we want it, it's always there. We can lay down our burdens and rest in the assurance that God, the God of the sunrise and the sunset, the God of day and night, the God of the seasons, he's also our creator, the creator of time. He holds us in his hands and sometimes we just need to stop. We need to pause, to admit that we are human. And it's only then when we allow God to be God that we reach a balance in our lives and we fill our, our time wisely and well. So slow down, take time, listen to that still small voice. I'm reminded of Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders will have toiled in vain. Unless the Lord watches over a city, in vain the watchman stands on guard. In vain you rise up early and go late to rest, toiling for the bread to eat. He supplies the needs of those he loves. Amen.